Northern woodpeckers in the trees, and the views of London, Essex, Kent, and Surrey from my balcony are fabulous. I'm lucky to live within walking distance of Southfield Station and Village and to have an excellent variety of independent shops and a very good local li library. For tennis fans, it is wonderful when for two weeks every year we have the Wimbledon Championships on our doorstep. I've been involved in my residence association for many years. As the chair for the past four years, I represent a diverse mixture of freeholders, leaseholders, council tenants, and subtenants. I believe that resident participation should be encouraged and that users of council services should have a say in how they are managed. You can usually tell when there is an active residence association in a block or on, a, on an estate because they are better maintained. Schools, hospitals, and other public organizations have places on their governing bodies for users of their services, and they recognize that services are better when you involve users. I have often wondered why more members of the various residence panels do not become local councillors, because to me it should be a natural progression. Residence associations are non-political, but there is a limit to what you can achieve as a member of these panels. Many people do not realize how living in a council property was aspirational before the 1980s. But for those like me who grew up here in Wandsworth in an overcrowded private rented accommodation without basic amenities, the idea of having a secure tenancy and a property with gas, electricity, an inside lavatory, hot water and a bathroom at a reasonable rent was an unattainable dream. All this has now changed. Now those living on council estates are often viewed as scoundrels. The states have changed. Nearly 50% of properties managed by this council are leasehold, many of whom are owner-occupiers who, like me, purchased an ex-local authority property because it was just about affordable. The alternative is the private rented sector. Leaseholders are often demonized as greedy and exploitative, but in my experience, Many of the volunteers who are active in residence associations are leaseholders who really care about their estate and community. We need more council homes and we need to look after the ones we have. It's so important to maintain council estates to high standards so that residents feel proud of where they live. Many residents feel helpless when dealing with the council and do not believe that the council listens to them. I do understand the reasons why some are reluctant to hold a ballot, but surely we want to ensure that the estate regeneration has the support of all those affected. Why wouldn't we want to give residents a clear say on whether the plan should go ahead? I became a councillor because I want to give a voice to all those residents living on estates who are sometimes forgotten. And it is a privilege to be a local councillor, but I will never forget that I'm also a resident. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Arlen, for that um, very practical and somewhat magnanimous uh, maiden speech. Councillor Sweet. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I think what we've heard from councillors on both sides is that when it comes to council housing, shared ownership and low-cost home ownership, we actually want the same thing. And that's why I think that the support of the Latchmere councillors in the regeneration of Winstanley York Road has been really welcome over the last few years. The housing shortage is too big for one party to solve on its own. And it's also too big for one borough to so sort out on its own. And that's why I just want to speak a little bit about why I think we need to work together and why we need to put a little bit of pressure on City Hall to help us out. Council-led regeneration is not enough on its own to deliver the new homes that Wandsworth needs. Um, and I, I want to explain why I think that private development actually does have a role to play, contrary to what Councillor White has said. The Planning Committee at Wandsworth Council last year had given the highest number of planning permissions for new homes of any borough in London, including all of the Labour boroughs, absolutely at, at the top of uh, the London Borough League table, table. That puts us well ahead of GLA targets on housing, and that includes well ahead of targets on affordable housing too. That, I think, is Wandsworth holding up its side of the bargain. 
And the truth is that at planning committee, more often than not, when it comes to major developments, there is a consensus. We get support on both sides of, uh, of the table. But I want to talk about what happens after Wandsworth has done its bit, because it happens behind closed doors in City Hall, and I think it's actually quite shocking, and it's really important that councillors in this chamber, including on the Labour benches, understand what's happening. In one corner of Wandsworth alone, 1,000 new homes are currently stuck in a kind of vortex at City Hall. And that's because once we have given planning permission in Wandsworth, the onus switches over to the mayor and he has to give stage two approval. And if, if a development doesn't get stage two approval, even if every councillor in Wandsworth supported it, that development cannot be built. So 1,000 homes are currently stuck there and I actually think Councillor White, who's clearly a very passionate man, might do well to direct that passion to City Hall. And I'm going to explain the, the two of those schemes and why, why it's a bit of a problem. On the B&Q site next to Wandsworth Town Station, we gave planning permission about 10 months ago for a development that, that would deliver 35% affordable housing, which is a really good number. But the Mayor of London insisted that he could do better. So he called it in at the stage two uh, uh, part of the process that I described. And um, the developer basically decided that they could not make the sums work that the mayor was demanding. So after 10 months stuck in City Hall, they pulled out. And as a result, instead of getting 35% of 512 new homes, we've got 35% of zero new homes. Now, just, just over the road, on the other side of the road, the home base site. Now, this time, the mayor insisted on 35%, right from the outset. But planning permission is no good, so, so the developer got planning permission. But planning permission is no good if you can't actually afford to build out the scheme that you've been given permission for. And yet again, it took 18 months, but after 18 months, the developer has decided they cannot proceed. And as a result, instead of 35%, of 385 new homes, we've got 35% of zero new homes. Wandsworth is doing more than any other borough when it comes to providing new social housing, as Councillor Caddy and others have said. But that's always going to be dwarfed by private sector development. Those 1,000 new homes that are currently lost because of City Hall's failure to, to, to see through what Wandsworth has begun, those 1,000 homes are 10 times what Labour are suggesting in this amendment for Winstanley Winston Road alone. So it's really significant numbers. We've got major house builders such as Barclay Homes, Barrett, Cress Nicholson currently saying that there's no opportunity for them to develop in London. That is absolutely mad. There is such a shortage of housing in London and yet all of the major developers are saying they can't build homes here. And the blame for that, I'm afraid, goes directly to the Mayor of London. So uh, I again would ask Councillor White to direct his passion to the Mayor of London. Let's unblock this system and actually get some, some homes being delivered. Personal uh, so explanation, I'm please. I, I will I've been mentioned, I've so personal explanation. Councillor White. The thing is, uh, you, you could have got £60 million pounds from the, the Mayor of London. Absolutely no issue with that. You could have done it and you could have built these homes easily and you didn't do it. So stick to what the question is and what the amendment is. You could build these 170, you could have had uh, these Cousin 170. Mike, technically that's you not a not to. personal explanation. But perhaps um, we say it's your game I, I will just wrap up now. I mean, uh, you, you're asking for 170 new homes. With a little bit of a change of approach from the Mayor of London, you could get 1,000 new homes. Okay, so you're, you're responsible. Um, but I'm, I'm actually su supporting this original motion because I believe that our cross-party cross approach in Wandsworth is actually quite unusual and it's very pragmatic. And I, I think that um, the most important part of this motion is about that cross-party cooperation. And I'm very proud that in March, on the Winstanley York Road first phase development, it was passed unanimously by planning committee, and that's, that's going to bring 138 new homes. So I think that, that cross-party approach needs to continue. That's all I wanted to say.
Councillor Hogg. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm grateful for this um, absorbing debate and to the whips for allowing it to continue at this late hour. Um, the Winstanley estate desperately needs um, investment after years of neglect. Um, we recall the Kingan report into the Clapham Junction riots stated that that estate was in the worst 1% of places to grow up as a child in the UK. And as I said in the, to this chamber eight years ago in my maiden speech, I joined this council not to keep my ward the same, but to change it. And since I was elected, more than a dozen young men have been shot and several murdered on that estate, and local children simply do not have the opportunities of those born on the other side of the tracks. Um, as Latchmere councillors, our deeds have matched our words. Uh, we backed the most ambitious and far-reaching master plan. Uh, we faced up to tough conversations. I've said directly to hundreds of residents that I think their homes should be demolished. And we were proud to agree a deal with the council where all tenants and leaseholders got new homes on the estate, where there's a new uh, school, new church, new leisure centre, and the same amount of green space is retained. And we were delighted when Sadiq Khan brought a long overdue end to the era where estate regeneration simply meant moving out existing communities to make way for unaffordable new developments. And as reminded by Councillor Caddy, actually, uh, I shouldn't tell her this because she was the candidate, but on uh, Southfield's by-election day in 2012, a group of Labour and Tory councillors snuck off the campaign trail and went to, to Latchmere to talk about the regeneration. And we couldn't use the library because it was closed because there'd been a horrible crime that day, but we were welcomed into Thames Christian College and we had a really good discussion and we got things done. And throughout, cooperation has been excellent on both sides. However, since the deal was agreed, the councillors added 500 extra units to the scheme, largely in private tower blocks, and the rebuilt estate will now only have 35% genuinely affordable housing. Crucially, crucially, the council is a 50-50 joint venture partner in this regeneration, and sadly, that incentivizes Wandsworth to behave exactly like a property developer. The more expensive the housing is, the more profit the council makes. So instead of maximizing affordable housing on public land, Wandsworth Council is in the perverse position of trying to minimize affordable housing on public land. We were told the rate of return for the property developer on this project is currently 35%. That's around double the industry standard. The profits therefore will be in the hundreds of millions. The Winstanley regeneration, make no mistake, could easily afford extra affordable homes. And the figures in the parallel Alton regeneration are even more questionable with the affordable housing in the mid 20%. We can do better because we control the land, a crucial factor in any development. Wandsworth Labour would make sure that an extra 100 of the homes in the regeneration are council homes for local people, plus similarly 70 council homes extra in the Alton scheme. This is a political choice and it simply requires political will we'll always stand up for local people. Labour was proud to lead the community campaigns that stopped the council closing the Winstanley Estates Library, the nearby Battersea Sports Centre, and now again, we're working hard with local people to save the children's centre that serves the estate. We're on their side. And when we take control of the council, we will change the regeneration plans. I want members and officers and our development partners to understand that. Many local people feel neglected. Previous promises have been broken. They see Wandsworth time and again put property developers' interests ahead of those of local people. To win their trust, we need to truly listen and to put local people at the heart of changes in their area. If the current leader is serious about cross-party support, he will make changes to his plans. If he chooses not to, he'll find our scepticism hardening and he'll see the public's opposition growing. And I say all of this more in sorrow than in anger. We want the Winstanley estate to get the regeneration it so desperately needs. But this regeneration is turning into a good deal for property developers and a bad deal for local people. Councillor Cook. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I'm 
pleased to have the opportunity of uh, concluding uh, this debate, which uh, is so much about it, it is positive, and as we alluded to earlier in some of the questions, uh, we should just be so proud as a council of what we are about to achieve. It's really very remarkable. Um, the, the recent groundbreaking at uh, Shuttleworth Road uh, this week, this Monday, uh, it's the start of something really, really big, which will transform the lives of, of residents in that part of, of the borough uh, and, and bring a new, new hope of life chances, uh, sense of community and belonging, which I think there is agreement across the chamber on. Um, and all of this, I would really like to, to pay tribute to our, our fantastic staff in the housing department, uh, the consultants who have uh, contributed to it. And, and and insofar as it has actually happened, and I do hope it continues, the uh, cooperation between political parties and perhaps above all the engagement with local people. And the leader's absence uh, perhaps gives me the opportunity to, to pay tribute to, uh, to his quiet determination on that front. He's plugged away at that year in, year out, absolutely determined that as many people as possible should be on board with this. And uh, that's been uh, recognized nationally. And he, he now has uh, contributed a number of national uh, bodies describing what we've done here in Wandsworth. Um, these, these two projects, as Councillor Caddy has already said, are virtually unique in guaranteeing the right of return of tenants and of owner-occupying leaseholders. They deliver not just, and some councillors on the opposite side, opposite side really need to take note of this, not just additional council housing, also shared ownership, new means of low-cost uh, home ownership, and eligibility for help to buy. So when you take all of that, the diversity of tenure opportunities, and all of those things are leading, will lead to more balanced communities, and it's absolutely unmatched across London. There is no other London borough who comes any, that comes anywhere close to what we're doing. So, so let's just look at a quick scorecard of where we are so far. We're only just starting, so this is going to get better. Across all tenures, and Councillor Caddy and I are both carrying a briefing document, such as our devotion to this topic, and I've just double-checked, uh, across all of the tenures, the numbers will be increasing. There is not a single housing tenure type that will be diminished in any way. So, Councillor Hogg, I'm afraid you need to take note of that, and one or two of your colleagues as well seem to be unaware of it. Um, and so, that's 2,000 additional homes, almost 2,000 additional homes with Stanley York Road, and nearly 1,000 in Roehampton. Huge, huge numbers. Um, training and job opportunities are going to be created in both these locations, which will build on our fantastic work match achievements. Um, the youngest in these communities is going to get tremendous childcare and aspirational early year schooling. Absolute transformation. Huge investment in new community facilities, two new libraries, sound familiar? Uh, community halls, meeting rooms, and in all of this, an emphasis on youth facilities. Uh, massive improvements in the quality of buildings. That matters so much in terms of how people react to the public realm, and we all know that impacts much more widely than, than has perhaps been appreciated in the past in Kabuzier's time. Uh, it affects crime in particular. We know that. And so Council Hogg's right to make the connection, uh, perhaps maybe not making the point he wanted to make. Um, I'd also like to pay tribute to the excellent work of our public health team, uh, really getting stuck in there with, in particular, healthy eating programs, healthy living workshops, really making a difference already. So all of this taken together, tremendous profound impacts on the quality of life of people who live in these two areas and, uh, and the connectivity as well. They're going to be transformed and we should be very proud of it. So I do slightly regret the negative tones struck by some, uh, some councillors' office. I think it's unfortunate uh, and I think, uh, I think it would be good if there was a bit of a correction back in the other direction uh, to support what we're doing because there is nowhere in London uh, where, where this is happening. Um, turning briefly to the opposition amendment, uh, I do believe this misunderstands the financial model uh, and 100 or 170, which, whichever figure you care to choose, uh, would be a grotesquely inefficient way of delivering uh, that number. Uh, and I believe you do know that, having been briefed on it at the recent uh, OSC. Um, contrast that with our, it's essentially an arbitrary number, contrast that with our much, much higher numbers uh, of all the different tenure types, which are deliverable. And we do believe we've got the balance of risk and reward uh, absolutely right. Um, so they know that uh, that amendment wouldn't work and it would also cost enormous sums in having to reverse commitments that have already been made uh, and by which we are now legally bound. So it'd be disastrous and so we're not, uh, not uh, going to do that. Um, so um, does anyone in this chamber seriously believe that it's what residents want after so much clear support from residents to, to unpick those arrangements? Um, I, I don't think so. I don't think anyone on this side will, will think so. So I would uh, urge the defeat of the amendment and the support of the motion. Thank you.
The matter now before the Council is the Labour Group Amendment on the Regeneration Proposal Motion. Agenda Item 22. Please indicate by a show of hands those for the amendment. Those against the amendment? The amendment is lost by 24 votes to 29. The matter now before the Council is the motion on regeneration, agenda item number 22. Please indicate by a show of hands those for the motion. Those against the motion? The motion is carried by 30 votes to 23. We now return, let me now turn to executive report number two and I will ask Councillor Ellis to deal with paragraphs one and two from the report. Mr. Mayor, I believe there's an amendment to paragraph one. There is a reference up. Uh, amendment. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'm, I'm happy to move it, but I believe there's an amendment. So I'd formally move uh, for information. Right, Councillor Pritchard, do you want to move your amendment? Uh, excuse me, I move the reference up amendment. I'll second it on behalf of Councillor Henson. He's not here. Thank you. So uh, we put the amendment reference of amendment to the vote by a show of hands those in favour those against the reference of amendment Reference up, amendment is lost by 24 to 29. Paragraph 2 is for information. Okay, is, is the reference up, up um, no, sorry, is paragraph 1 uh, received for information? Same numbers. Same numbers. Yep, okay. Uh, so it is accepted. Paragraph 2 is for information. Mr. Mayor, paragraph 2 is for information. All right. Thank you very much, Councillor. Community Services and Open Spaces Overview and Scrutiny Committee. Councillor Mrs. Sutters. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Paragraph 3 for information. Paragraph 4 for information. Same numbers again? Right. Paragraph three, those in favour of receiving this for information. Those against.
Right. Uh, paragraph three is carried 30... Th 30... 30 in favour and 22 against. Paragraph 4 is for information. Can we have the same numbers? Same numbers. Okay, cool. Education and Children's Services Overview and Scrutiny Committee. Councillor McDermott. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Paragraph 5 is for information. Paragraph 6 for information. Paragraph 7, information. Paragraph 8 is for information. Paragraph 9 is for information. Same number? Okay, this is on. All right, paragraph nine, charges um, paper. Uh, those in favour, please. Those against? Th carried 30 22. Paragraph 10 for information. And paragraph 11 for information. Okay. Same numbers? Okay, those in favour. All right. Those in favour of uh, accepting paragraph 11 for information, safeguarding children okay. board. And those against? Those against? Okay. Carried 29-23. Strategic Planning and Transportation Overview and Scrutiny Committee. Councillor Cook. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Paragraph 12 is for information. Uh, paragraph 13 is for information, and paragraph 14 is for information. Housing and Regeneration Overview and Scrutiny Committee. Councillor Caddy. Okay, paragraph 15 is... Okay, 15 and 16 together. Both for information. Those in favour? Those against? Okay, that was a bit of a there. Any abstentions? Any abstentions? Okay, that's carried 29-22, one abstention. Finance and Corporate Resources over in Scrutiny Committee, Councillor Senior. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Paragraph 17 is for information. Those in favour of accepting paragraph 17 for information, please raise your hands. Those against? Any abstentions to be recorded? Okay. That is carried 29-22-1. Uh, where have we got to? Paragraph 18. Is Paragraph 18 is also for information. Planning Applications Committee Report Number 3, Councillor Sweet. Uh, Paragraph 1 for information. Paragraph 2 for information. Paragraph 3 for information. Paragraph 4 for information. Paragraph 5 for information. Joint Pensions Committee report number 4, Councillor Senior. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Paragraph 1 is for information. Standards Committee report number 5. Councillor Mrs. Graham. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, paragraph graph one and paragraph two for information. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Joint Staffing Committee report number six, Councillor Senior. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Paragraph four is for information. Licensing Committee report number seven, Councillor Humphreys. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Paragraphs one, two, and three are for information. Regulatory Licensing Committee, report number eight, Councillor Humphreys. Thank you, Mr Mayor. And again, paragraphs one and two for information. General Purposes Committee, report from this meeting has already been considered. Report number one, items for decision. Health and Wellbeing Board, Councillor Ellis. Uh, Mr Mayor, paragraphs one, two, three, and four are for information. 
Item 20 is the report of the Chief Executive and further proposed changes to committee memberships for the municipal year 2018-19, Paper Okay, can you calm down in the public gallery, please? Okay, calm down in the public gallery, please. Okay, I'm uh, going to adjourn the council for two minutes. <laughs> Hello, up there. Can you clear the gallery, please? Please clear the gallery. Right, the um, council has reconvened. Item 20 is the report of the Chief Executive on further proposed changes to the committee memberships for the municipal year 2018-19. Paper number, thank you. An amended paper has been tabled. In addition, the council is also being asked to approve the appointment of Councillor Arland in place of Councillor Dickadam on the Borough Residence Forum. Are those recommendations, including the amendments, agreed? Thank you, councillors. That concludes the business for this evening. And despite the unfortunate circumstances, I am now retiring to the parlour. Anybody who still feels like um, mince pies and mulled wine uh, is welcome to come along. <laughs>